is the Chrissy Swan Show. Our queen and saviour, Taylor Swift. Calvin Harris is uh, one of her longest relationships. I think they went out together for six years. No. Cal- no, no, I think... No, Joe was yeah, six years. I think Calvin and Taylor were like six months. Okay. Let's, I feel let's like quickly it was chat. longer than that. But anyway, he's now moved on, as has she, and he's uh, married a woman called Vic Hope. And she has confessed. 15 months, one year. 15 you months, yeah, a year and a bit. Um, she has convi- uh, confessed that as soon as he's out of the house, she turns on our queen and saviour, Taylor Swift, and has a little fix. Good on her. Good on her. Uh, n- not mentioned in the article. Yeah. Is what songs she goes to. Damn it. And I really want to know. I wonder if, you know, she listens to Getaway Car. Which is reportedly about her husband. Yeah. There's a lot of conspiracy theories about that song and the date of April 29, and I do believe that Taylor did the dirty on Calvin Harris. Right. Because that's, is it High Infidelity? High Infidelity. That's the song she references that day. Yes. I mean, it's, you could spend every day of the next 20 years Looking into the conspiracy theories. Around that date, right? Around that date and many, many other things. But I want to talk about your secret pleasures that you only indulge in when you are on your own mm. because they exist. For Vic Hope, it's a it's a sneaky little listen to, I'm going to say, 1989. I'm with you, Swanee, because I don't think she's listening to folklore evermore. I think it's a little bit more mainstream. I feel Big like hits. also she could go 1989 or um, Midnight's. I don't know. Yeah, I'm okay. just feeling a Midnight's vibe off her. For me, if I ever get the house to myself, which, as you know, is frustratingly rare. <laughs> like once a decade. If it ever happens <laughs> yeah. to plan and someone's not at home with COVID or whatever they <laughs> turn on i like to order a laksa with extra prawns and eat it on the couch on my boob shelf yeah right which i prepare with a tea towel because that bowl is hot Mm. right and i i rest it i i I lean back on the thing and i I, it doesn't matter what's on netflix it doesn't matter no what matters is the boob shelf and what matters is the boob shelf and that there is some sort of protection between the boozies yeah and The hot bowl. We don't want burned nipples. (laughs) No. And the reason I love that is because nobody likes a luxer at my house. Ah, okay. And my son is deathly allergic, as in will die. Of course. About prawns. So I go ham on the prawns and ham on the chili. Yeah, good. And that is my idea of happiness. I love that. You share a house with a magic man called Chris. Chris Contos. What do you do? There's one thing I can't do when he is there. So when he is away, mm. I will closet listen to Pink. <laughs> really? It's like, see ya. I'm Have coming fun. clean. Have fun on your work trip. He hates her. So if I ever wanted to, you know, I don't even want to listen to her. But because I can't, yes. when he's away, I will. The Chrissy Swan Show. We're talking about the sneakity deekity things you get up to when you finally get a moment Alone. That sounds a lot ruder than it is. I have a Luxa that I slurp off my boob shelf on the couch. Yeah. And I feel like I can't do that when everyone's at home, mainly because uh, prawns will kill my son. <laughs> it's very kind of you to not put him in that position, Thank Swanee. you very much. When your housemate's <laughs> gone, Jack, you... Closet listen to Pink. Only sometimes. What is the first song that you would go to? Uh, of Pink's. Oh, this is so grim. I love it so much. I just love it. I love old Pink. I love old Pink. Like, just like a pill, like that era. Like, when she's a bit grungier. It's not like, I'm never gonna not dance. None of that. No, none of the new stuff. No, you like, like the old uh, stuff. Kylie, what do you get up to when you finally get a minute alone? Because, of course, Calvin Harris's wife, when she waves him goodbye down the garden path, she comes straight in and puts on Taylor Swift because, of course, they had a relationship. Kylie, what's your secret? Uh, my little secret is as soon as I get home and I know when no one's there, I just totally get naked, commando, everything off, <laughs> and just sort of walk around and make a cup of tea or I, mean, I just think it's brilliant. What, so you don't have a dressing gown on or anything? You're just completely naked? Completely naked. I do have a sarong handy in case the doorbell goes, but <laughs> curtains all pulled and just walk around naked. I mean, is there a greater moment? Of the day when you take your bra off. Oh, oh nothing like it. There is Even nothing. 
giving us a quick spin as well. Oh, yes, really yes. <laughs> you're in the draw for Nova's first class and 50K, Kylie. Sarah, what do you do when your partner's away in your home alone? Uh, I tend to renovate, rip up carpet, paint rooms. <laughs> what? Because he's not there to tell me I can't do it. It sounds like the sort of thing where an, an extra pair of hands would be handy, though, Sarah. Yeah, I know, but I just do it by myself. And, yeah, when he comes home, it's already done or half done. So he can't <laughs> tell me I can't continue with it because it's halfway through. I love that, that you're opting to do it by yourself because, yes, yep. there's an extra pair of hands, but also an extra set of opinions that you don't <laughs> care right. for. Love it, Sarah. That's you right. are in the draw for first class and 50K. Julie, what do you do? Hi. This is the best two hours of my day, just saying, Jack, and you. Love oh, you. bless um, you, Jules. Just, I just basically channel surf all the crappy reality TV shows <sighs> that he cannot stand. And I sit, if he's out, he tends to have his little dinners and he's off to Germany. He said, I've got two weeks to myself to do that. Oh my and God. I'll just snack on whatever. I don't have to cook three meat and veg. It's just the things I love That's to eat. That's such an old school thing. My dad is still like that. Like three he wants meat his, and veg. His three veg and yeah. meat. Yeah, he could uh. learn to make it himself, just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> Julie, just before you go, I just, yeah. I can see you so clearly in your house <laughs> watching <laughs> shitty television. Yeah. What is on your perfect snacky dinner plate? Like are you a oh, cheese and God, crackers? I could just do omelette. I can do right, corn thins with Butter and Vegemite. Oh. I can do like um, you know, celery full of beautiful crunchy peanut butter. Oh um, God, this is heaven! <laughs> I'd go hungry. You know, stuff. Oh God, I'll be thinking of you when mm. when uh, those two weeks when he's in Germany. How heavenly! Mm. Really quickly, let's finish with Brian in Brisbane. Brian. G'day, good afternoon. Hello, oh, Brian. To, uh, let's uh, let's just do a little uh, a little <laughs> um, set up here. You're at home in your house. Your wife, you just heard the, the, the Kia or the Serato just <laughs> reverse out of the driveway. And what are you doing next? Straight out back to the swimming pool. I like to swim in the backyard naked. She's in fear. The neighbours are going to be looking over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> What's your wife's name, Brian? Uh, Vicky. So when Vicky comes home and she sees that you are looking fresh but there's no wet bathers around, are you in trouble, Brian? <laughs> yeah, she, if she's bringing friends home, I am. <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. Let's talk about Baby Reindeer, please. Please. Loosely, a, uh, a autobiographical story about a, a stand-up comedian in the UK called Richard Gadd who was stalked by a woman that walked into a bar that he was working in, said she was a lawyer... They struck up, I'm going to say, friendship. Yeah, sort of. And uh, things went very, very bad. We don't want to give away too much because it is on Netflix and it's the number one show and everyone's watching it. You should watch it. You should. It's an easy watch. How many eps? Six, five? Seven episodes. Seven eps. They're not very long. Some are 30 minutes. It's really worth watching. Um Obviously, the next part of the story is that people are in, in, intensely curious and they have tracked down the woman um, that is the stalker. The thing is, I read this article on the story and because, uh, you know, Google is my friend, and Richard Gadd was saying that the, the situations that happened mm -hmm. are real, but the character in this story, Baby Reindeer, is not easily identifiable as the stalker. Right, okay. So Martha, I believe, is the stalker's name Correct. on the show. Do we think they've maybe dramatised her personality and how yes, she acts? Yes, and, you know, where she's from and all of that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, and can I just say, Jessica Gunning, who plays Martha, does an unbelievable job at that role. Unbelievable Like the job. star of the show. And the uh, girl who plays the transgender girlfriend yes. of Richard Gadd, fabulous. Fantastic. I've Googled the hell out of that too. Nava? Anyway, is her name Nava in real yes, life, I think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I follow them all on Instagram now. Ovs. Of <laughs> Ovs. Uh, so, Baby Reindeer, you and I have both watched it. I haven't finished it, actually. I've got one app to go. But I've done that thing where, you know, when you like a show and it's rare, mm. you don't want to blow it all in one go, so I'm eking it out. I get that, but don't eke it out too much because there's something oh, in no. the binge because you remember all of the little bits yeah. that tie together. It's shocking and awful and scary. However, 
<laughs> yes, Jack, did you want to say something? <laughs> no, I was just going to say, speaking about how shocking it is, all I could think the whole time watching it was how brave it was of Richard Gadd to not only live this, but then play it. Yes, and he show. actually said something like that. Have a listen. It is a stalker story, but it's a stalker story with a twist. It's a stalker story done differently. Every now and again, I have these sort of giddy bursts of excitement where I'm almost like a kid back at school. And then I have these bouts of, oh, my God, everyone's going to know my shit. Yeah. Oh, my God, everyone's going to know what happened to me. Yeah, and people get that same feeling when they share like a, a their story in a in a book or a yeah, yeah. like an autobiography. It's like, yeah, it feels great to get it out. But then the moment comes that the book is released and someone on the street goes, Hey, what about that situation you had in your kitchen? And you're like, Oh yeah, that's right. I've told everybody my innermost trauma and secrets. And now everybody gets an opinion. Exactly. Now I want to talk about stalking in general because I'm watching Baby Reindeer and I'm every it's you know, it's shocking and invasive and Disgusting and illegal. But so captivating and entertaining at the same time. And also, I think I may have done similar things. It's <laughs> chaotic Chrissy entering her stalker era. In my past, because I'm sitting on my couch judging this poor woman and I thought, hang on a minute, Chrissy. Before you judge this poor w- woman, think about the time that you caught a tram to your crush's house. <laughs> And Should you be admitting this stuff? And cut some flowers from his front garden, put them in your backpack, went home and contacted them onto the front of your school diary. In, ho- in like, hope that he would see it and recognise that they are his flowers? No. Just to have memory of him near you? Yes. Right. Is that? Yeah, that's... N- I wouldn't call it normal. <laughs> but I'm not saying it's Richard Gadd level of... No, it's not. But all I'm saying oh, is... You can draw a comparison. Yes. Yeah. I'm and sure I... there are people out there that can too. And I feel like we've all done stuff like that, that in hindsight we go, is that legal? Is that weird? <laughs> like imagine if that guy, Paul was his name... <laughs> Imagine if he'd come out just at that moment and seen 16-year-old me with my mum's sewing scissors. You could have a mug shot. Like, that is really, like, (laughs) yes. The Chrissy Swan Show. The Chrissy Swan Show. We're talking about Baby Reindeer. Everyone's talking about it on Netflix. It's a great series. It's about a man who meets an unusual woman in a bar and then she proceeds to stalk him. And he lets her stalk him because he's compassionate and empathetic. I get it. He does. And the thing that I found really amazing about the show, Swanee, is that Donnie, who's the fictionalised character in the show, is played by Richard Gadd, who lived this experience. That's right. It's quite phenomenal. It is fascinating. And I just want to reiterate here, stalking is illegal. Yeah. And ruins everyone's lives. But you did it. I I did not. Yeah, you did. I did not. You went to someone's house and cut flowers from their front garden. This is the thing. I was watching this poor woman on on the screen, Martha, and judging her. And I thought, hang on. How is what she's doing different from catching a train to a strange boy's house that I had a crush on when I was 15 <laughs> and clipping a flower from his yard to put on the front of my school di- diary. How is it different? <laughs> Anon, this is serious. Are you there? Yes, I am. Please tell me what you've done that is untoward behaviour. So we had a very shady neighbour and we kind of, found his Facebook and like a lot of other old accounts that he had, but also old arrest details, like arrest warrants on Google. (laughs) Google is a curious, crazy person's friend, isn't it? Yes, (laughs) yeah. And do you feel bad about what you've done to this dodgy neighbour? No. (laughs) Not at all. And, Non, we're going to send you a double pass to Abigail, which is in cinemas now. Colleen. Hi, guys. How are you going? Colleen, what is your shameful secret vis-a-vis following someone? Um, I had an ex-boyfriend who actually stole my horse 
who was pregnant at the time and I stopped him for about a week to try and see where he was driving and to see if I could find where he had taken her. But after about a week, um, I started to feel a little bit dangerous, so I stopped. Did you... (laughs) Did you oh. did you do the proper stuff like you know wear dark shades and a, a hoodie and eat donuts in your car while you were watching his whereabouts? <laughs> I slept in my car. I had a dinner in my car. And Colleen. In my car. Yeah. Oh, Colleen. Did you have to take like a week off work? Like, what about normal life? Yeah, I, I was in between jobs, so okay. I left that that hall. So, was there a moment, Colleen, where you were sitting in your car? Yes. Con- mm. Yeah, there was, wasn't there? Where you went? Hang on a minute, I've lost my mind. <laughs> Colleen. Oh, hang on. He must be coming. She's, <laughs> she, she's spotted the horse, guys. Sarah, what's the most stalker-like thing you've done? Okay. So when I was about 13 and 14, and I can say this because he lives in the UK and I live in Australia, I was totally in love with this boy at school called Keith Bigden. <laughs> and when he used to spit his chewing gum out on the floor, I used to get like a little pill jar and collect it. Yeah. And keep it. In my bedroom. Sarah, a hard relate. I would have done, <laughs> I absolutely would have done stuff like that. In fact, a distant bell is ringing. No. <laughs> I, well, the crazy thing is as well, I like I moved to Australia like eight years ago, so I had to have a good clean out. Um, and I literally threw it away eight years ago and I've just turned 50. So I, I had it for literally... Decade, Sarah. I I blame Wham. I blame <laughs> Wham. Was. Yep. Yeah, it probably was. And Nick Kershaw and Duran Duran and all of that weird love pop stuff that we just took in. Sarah, I've got to ask: when you'd get the gum, was it still wet? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sarah, what a shame you threw it out. You could have extracted some DNA and had his baby. <laughs> a double pass to Abigail for you as well, Sarah, which is in cinemas now. Is this shocking to you? Yes. I would never do stuff like I this. I feel like it's very normal for teenage girls. Caroline, what what did you do? Well, when I was younger, I was absolutely obsessed with take that like to the point where when they split up, like I rang the helpline and it was- <laughs> <laughs> and like literally I could not cope and just before they hit the big time they lived down the road from where I did and I once followed Howard Donald <laughs> to the petrol station slash servo um, and he went in to get some and I stole his bike. <laughs> you stole his bike? <laughs> yep, stole his bike. I cycled off on that thing as fast as the wind. <laughs> <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. We're talking urban myths. Yeah. Because... I don't think that there is any time that you feel more stupid than when you believe in the story that you're hearing. And then when you later find out, you feel like such an idiot. No, and what's worse is then you tell that story as if it's happened to you or as if you know the person it's happened to. And then it turns out to be utterly made up. Glenn Powell, who is an actor that I haven't really seen in anything. I keep meaning to watch that movie that he shot here with Sydney with Sweeney. Sydney Sweeney, anyone but you. Yeah. I haven't seen it and it just doesn't look like my thing, but I did see a lot of headlines at the time with him. Same, and much like the rule you've taught me, when they do so much press like yeah. they did, it's yeah. generally shit. Yeah, it's a box office stinker. Anyway, Glenn Powell has sat down and regaled uh, a podcast host about a story that absolutely, definitely, 100% happened to a friend of his. Have a listen. She goes on a date with this guy. She goes back to his apartment that night and he's like, hey, can I give you a massage? She just started getting like weird vibes. She's like, something feels off. She's kind of just feeling like everything's just feeling odd. She leaves. Her skin starts itching like crazy the next day. She goes to the doctor. It turns out that it's a black market lotion that breaks down skin for human consumption. (gasps) Was rubbing lotion on her body to eat her. Full cannibal. I mean, that is is a shocking story. A great story, though. Like a Netflix doco kind of story. And also, does that cream really exist? Come on. I mean, if you put some, like, form of chemical or acid in there, probably. <laughs> like, some murderer probably could do that. Turns out that that did not happen to Glenn Powell's sister's friend at all. 
It's an urban myth. And if you Google the basic premise of the story. Yeah, right. It comes up in many, many different incarnations over years. How embarrassing for him. But the thing is, if somebody tells you something that happened to a friend of theirs, that's all the provenance I really ever need. And if it's a good story, you'll run with it, man. Have you ever sort yes. of fallen victim to an urban myth? 13, 24, 10, by the way. What is an urban myth that you have fallen for. Last year, I remember it so well because it was such a great story. My mate Elle was telling me this story that she'd heard through a makeup artist friend of hers who- See, uh, right. Straight there. I'm there. Yeah. Like, it's, obviously this happened. But it's always a friend of a friend. That's the first it red is, flag. Yes, yes. And it was about a wedding situation where the bride, just before the reception, was going to find the groom mm. and she walked into a bedroom and the groom was there, a full-grown man, being breastfed by his mum. <laughs> and I'm like, what a tale. Like, how amazing is that story? Oh, oh Two weeks God. later, I heard that story again. And I was like, hang on, this is a different friendship group that I'm hearing it from. This is a bit weird. Well, maybe that makeup artist is, you know, yeah. she's got a lot of friends. Global. <laughs> yeah. And then I gave it a Google and it turns out it's a story that's been told on Reddit for like years. Podcasts have spoken about it for years. So people have just somehow made it relate to their own friendship group. Had you shared that yeah. story with anyone? Like, oh, my, a friend of a friend. I went home and told my housemate because I'm like, that's nuts. And I wanted to find out who it was. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, do you, like, have you confronted the person that told you? I haven't. I hope she's listening right now, though. <laughs> the Chrissy Swan Show. We're talking about urban myths. An actor called Glenn Powell has passed off a story that did not happen <laughs> as fact as something that did actually happen to his sister's friend. Have a listen. She goes on a date with this guy. She goes back to his apartment that night and he's like, hey, can I give you a massage? She just started getting like weird vibes. She's like, something feels off. She's kind of just feeling like everything's just feeling odd. She leaves. Her skin starts itching like crazy the next day. She goes to the doctor. It turns out that it's a black market lotion that breaks down skin for <laughs> human consumption. <gasps> was rubbing lotion on her body to eat her. Whoever he was talking to on the podcast obviously hasn't heard the urban myth no. by his squealing. Jake Shane. And then Glenn had to go on Twitter and like admit that obviously his sister's friend was lying because that has been over, all over Reddit for years. I tell you what, it is lucky that he didn't take that story and bring it one step closer to him. Yeah. My mum, when she was little, I think it it really changed her DNA. She, a friend of hers told her when she was about like eight or nine that cats give birth to kittens through their mouths. Right? <laughs> so Ow. she she hit the schoolyard with that fact. Well, this is, uh, you know, my friends told me, la, la, la. And I think one kid said, oh, I don't believe you. That's not how it goes. And then mum took it one step further and said, I've seen it. Oh, Pat. And turns out, weirdly, the cats don't give no. birth in that way. They don't come out their mouth. But I think that taught her the lesson that never, ever bring it closer than Absolutely a friend of a friend. Absolutely not. And not to your own eyes. I know. Angela, you can't get the pa- past the fact that we haven't seen this Glenn Powell movie. I cannot give you an urban myth at all. I just can't get yeah, get out of my head that you have not seen anyone but you. So why should we see it? We saw all the publicity with Sydney Sweeney and Glenn Powell and I just felt like it stunk. <laughs> I I don't do movies. I, my brain goes too much to watch movies. Everything's mm. fake. But my 19-year-old daughter said, Mum, you need to watch this. You'll like this. And it had me grinning from ear to ear. The whole way through. Wow. And I mean the whole way through. I could probably go and watch it again and I never watch anything twice. Now, Angela, while we've got you, thank you for that recommendation. We yeah, might we like actually that. watch it because of you. I, n- I need you to go and watch it and I'll be ringing in again at the end of the week. Oh, I so love this. put it in your diary and I promise. Oh, and Angela, have you just got the hots for Glenn Powell? Or something. <laughs> I love it when you boss us around, Ange. <laughs> I've got to ask, I think you're probably about my age if you've got a 19-year-old daughter. Do you remember when we were youths, there was an urban myth going around that involved a car and a thud on the roof and someone with a head on the, on a spear? Do you remember that one? Oh, I'm not that old. No. <laughs> <laughs> Swanee. I, I, 
I am originally from Tasmania, so that might explain a bit. But oh, I, maybe... I'm 41, Chrissy. Oh, God, you were really a child bright. All right, let's move on to Bree. Hello, Bree. No. Oh, no, our phones are stuck. Not in the middle of urban myths. Does that mean we also cannot have Samantha? Oh, we can't have any of them. No, well, but, they're two great stories. Well, let's talk about them because we can see them on the <gasps> sc- Oh, we've got Bree. Hello, Bree. Hello. Hello. God, it was a close call. Tell <laughs> us, what is the urban myth that nearly came back to bite you? Well, I actually found out that it was an urban myth after the fact. I actually had no idea about it originally. I got it brought to my attention. I was actually involved in it. Oh, so, what happened? So I went to a wedding. I wore a red dress as I, I liked the dress. I figured it wasn't white, so it was a go. Yeah. Um, I did get a, like, I wouldn't say strange looks. I got stared at a bit. And then as everyone has a couple of drinks in the night, I had a couple of people come up to me and go, oh, you know the groom quite well, wouldn't you? And I'm like, well, yeah, we're family friends, you know, everyone's good mate. And I just agreed with it. <laughs> and then my best mate has told me a couple of days later that if you wear red to a wedding, you'll slept with the groom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Bria. I had no idea. <laughs> but had you? Had you, though? Had you, though? Do you no, want to? No, no. <laughs> you know? Well, I didn't know we that one. Our, yeah. We I all didn't... have our um, taste in men, and I can tell you that's not one of them. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair enough. I didn't know that. Did you, Jack? I'd never heard of that, but it kind of tracks. Like, yeah. I like that. Okay, okay. We're, we're having problems. Oh, Samantha, hello. You're there. Hello, I am. How Hi. are you? Good. What is your urban myth? Well, many, many years ago when I was first dating my husband, um, someone told, and I wanted to do something a little bit silly, um, someone told me at a cemetery in Brisbane, if you take your car there and you get your car in a certain spot and you put it in neutral, that your car will start going uphill by itself. So I convinced him to come and we (laughs) went there and I looked like a complete (laughs) so-and-so. Oh my God. Now check this out. The Chrissy Swan Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.